Uh, well, welcome everybody uh, to this first Advancing um, Substrate Independent Minds workshop, uh, the online workshop. Um, I think like every new workshop, it deserves some introduction, a little bit of explanation of what it's about, why we're here. And so I'm going to basically devote my talk to that. And I hope that you can all throw in questions and we can turn it into a discussion as I go along. So with that, the first slide. So I'm going to talk about a couple of things. First of all, um, what is the objective? Uh, what are we all here for? Uh, what is Advancing Substrate Independent Minds? Why do we even have that title? And why do we have this group, this group that's been discussing for a while online? And then what are the action points? What are the things we're actually going to be doing? So, uh, uh, so what you can see here is you can see individual synapses. And I think in the next slide, in the next slide, this is 10 sections uh, through uh, an individual synapse. And so you can see in, in tan uh, the, uh, um, uh, the dendritic spine and in, uh, in blue uh, the, um, uh, uh, the axon uh, with synaptic vesicles in it and such. So I, I think at this resolution, uh, this, uh, the scale bars here, each of these little circles is about uh, 40 nanometers in diameter. So this synapse is about one micron across. And uh, if, uh, if we were in a different forum, I'd show you a stack of this. We've got uh, about 2,000 uh, 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 images uh, at 50 microns by 50 microns uh, wide. Uh, that I could run through, uh, but I haven't downloaded that into this uh, into this forum. Um, so yes, just by kind of scanning small regions and and looking basically looking for our patterns and correlations in the in the type of of structure that we're seeing in the neural circuitry um, oh, that yeah, that yeah. can actually yes, inspire definitely. things uh, like neural net design. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So I was just wondering if there's a step kind of in between. <laughs> uh, right, that's a very good point. So there are people interested in things called uh, basic circuits. So the mm -hmm. interesting thing about the human brain or the mammalian brain is that even though there are millions of or billions of neurons in the brain, there's really uh, some kind of uh, redundancy in it and a repeated pattern of so small mm -hmm. circuits. Right, so once you're able to identify these circuits by some kind of data mining method, and uh, yeah. then you can abstract that kind of module instead mm -hmm. of simulating uh, the entire circuit uh, in a high-resolution uh, high simulation, Practical applications of this. So, uh, one thing that's come out of this is we've been developing a software package for reverse engineering neural systems. And so, what this consists of is uh, methods for large scale time series analysis, doing source mapping, um, and neural network and electrical array simulation. So, the, the idea is to have a large a package for doing large scale. Uh, analysis and modeling all in the same package and that you could easily go back and forth between uh, analysis and, and simulation. Um, the other idea for practical applications is to come up with, so if you, if you can do this, if you can auto automatically emulate a given network of neurons, you might be able to, to do automation of communications protocol for uh, BMI devices. So that the obvious targets would be sensory systems right now, things like cochlear implants, um, but possibly other systems as well. Okay, so all right, what this is all leading up, so this is my perspective on the roadmap. And, and I have, I, I share with Sim um, the idea that gradual replacement is probably the way I think things are going to go, simply because this is the way that the technology is going to develop anyway. And uh, why is, is this an optimal configuration? As an outline of a proof is like this, 
um, you have uh, you're operating in a relativistic universe, so you have signaling delays, and uh, your system has to operate to lie within each other light cones in order that it sees the changes, which have to overlap. So the outline of a proof is not two nodes can occupy the same space. Relativistic signaling limits for information. I mean, this is the reason why the Cray had uh, this strange uh, centric form, because they run into limits how quickly they could access the memory. Today's systems are a lot quicker. So I just sent computers might each other light cone. And shortable possible signal distances are closest packings of cell, which is addressed by crystallography or molecular crystals. So this is a kind of outline of a proof. So which system have we got so far? We see there is a convergence towards this, this architecture. We have two systems here from Tylera and from Intel, which are putting multiple cores with integrated memory on the same substrate, which are connected by, the, by a signaling mesh. So this is basically like a 2D approximation of a 3D computational substrate. They have to do this because they no longer cannot make the systems any quicker. Yeah, they have to put the memory into the systems and connect them with a signaling mesh. So what you see here, Tylera dial in 2D and eventually this will be 3D. In larger supercomputers, the nodes are connected with wires in a 3D node configuration, which is a good mapping for physical um, system simulation which is what we're trying to do. Luckily, your, our, our fastest interaction is uh, in millisecond range. When will the nanofactories start fabricating the nanorobots? Uh, well, Fridays and Merkel estimated that we should have manufacturers capable of manufacturing the nanorobots by 2030. Uh, the graph you, you, that you can see there has a timeline, and the proposal timeline, as you can see, um, points out to 2030. Okay. Okay, so two observations here. Uh, the timeline assumes that ideal funding levels are available and that the, a direct mechanosynthesis approach is pursued. Okay, so 2030. Uh, well, if I was sitting on that side, my question would be, well, how do we know that the timeline is correct? Um, Okay, the timeline was made back in 2005. Uh, so let's take a look and see if the timeline is correct in 2010. So let's take a look at the first part, which says the first line on the graph. Um, it, it talks about diamond mechanosynthesis. Okay, so uh, the graph predicts that by 2010, the theoretical part of diamond mechanosynthesis should be finishing and the experimental part should be starting. So the question is, is this true? And the answer is yes. Um, okay, here's why. Again, thank you all so very much for joining us and participating so well. It's obvious that, uh, I think it's obvious that we're highly motivated, enthusiastic, and basically intoxicated with ASIM. Um, please feel free to hang around after the end, though I'm sure many of us have other things that we need to tend to soon after this long and very productive workshop. Thanks again so much. It was a great workshop, awesome, far beyond my best expectations for the first workshop. Thanks a lot.